Hello and welcome to Finding Christ Ministry. Thank you for watching and what a blessing it is to be here with everyone today. And our topic today is uh, the bread of life. We tried to do this live yesterday and somehow I hit a button and it turned the video sideways. So we would just thought we would do a regular video on it today. So um, before we get started, our reading is going to come from John chapter 6, and it's going to be um, verse 22 through 38. And um, if you would like us to pray for you, please put it in the comment box because we'd love to pray for you. And always remember that God and Jesus loves you. And here at Finding Christ Ministry, we love you. We appreciate everyone that watches. Thank you for supporting us by watching and um, we really and sharing. We really do appreciate it. So thank everyone very much for that. So at the end of it, we'll do a prayer together. And um, <clears throat> as I said, our topic is the bread of life. And we all know that Jesus is the bread of life. And let's find out why Jesus said he is the bread of life. So our reading, we're going to start with John chapter 6, verse 22 says, on the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that, saw that there was no other boat there except the one which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. However, however other boats came to Tiberias, near the place where they ate bread, after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me. Not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endure, endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do, that we may work? The works of God. Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who sent, whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then that will that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that my Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me. Uh, of all of <clears throat> that all of all he has given me I should lose nothing but should rise it up at the last day all right, and that was our reading from John and let's look at this let's focus on um, pretty much chapter 6 verse 35. But Jesus called himself the bread of life. 
he was drawing a rich symbol of Jewish life. Bread had an important place in Israel's worship. During Pentecost, two loaves of Laban bread were offered as sacrifices. And you can find that in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 17. In the tabernacle and the temple, the Levites placed 12 loaves of unleavened bread before the Lord to symbolize God's presence with the 12 tribes. And you can find that in Exodus chapter 25, verse 30. And it's also called the table of showbread. And you can find that in Acts 25, 23 through 30. Each morning of the Exodus and the 40 years of wonder, wilderness wandering, God miraculously sustained his people with manna from heaven. The bread like manna was a small round substance as fine as frost. It looked like coriander seed and tastes like wafers made with honey or a pastry prepared with oil. It was this manna that Jesus had in mind when he called himself the true bread from heaven. The bread which comes down from heaven and the bread of life. He is the spiritual food given by the Father to those who seek, ask, and knock. Jesus imparted even more meaning to his words by delivering his bread of life discourse during Passover. Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, celebrated Israel's deliverance from Egypt. On the night before the Exodus, the night of the first Passover, the Israelites ate unleavened bread because they had no time to let their bread rise. Jesus wanted everyone to understand that he was God's provision for people's deepest needs. Just as God had provided for his people as they fled Egypt, so Jesus was ready to nourish all who came to him. Sadly, people balked at his teachings. Their hearts were hard with unbelief. Many turned away, but to those who believed, Jesus gave abundant and eternal life. So what was Jesus ultimately saying when he said, I am the bread of life? What Jesus is ultimately saying is he can, he can satisfy our deepest needs and longing. He can make us feel full and overflowing with blessings. It also means when Jesus said he is the bread of life, it also means the man that comes to Jesus will never hunger and the man who believes in Jesus will never again be hungry and thirsty. See, we need the physical bread to keep our bodies sustained and full while we are here on earth. But we need the spiritual bread which is Jesus to fill our hearts and to um, fill our souls and prepare us for the eternal life. You can look at it also like this. Jesus offers us something even better than food for our stomachs. When Jesus said he is the bread of life, he means that he wants to fill our empty hearts. Without Jesus, we would go hungry. We may have food in our stomachs to feel full, but spiritually, we would have nothing without Jesus. You know, the bread for the manna that God gave when they fled Egypt was a gift from heaven. It sustained them. 
to give them the nutrients that they needed to survive on this earth. But you got to remember the ultimate gift from heaven is God's Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who will give us nourishment for our eternal life. And he does that through his teachings in, of the scriptures. He gives us that through all the prophecies that have been fulfilled within the scriptures. And he also gives us that through our studies. So if you need that nourishment of Jesus Christ in your life, if you don't have that nourishment of Jesus in your life, I encourage you to um, make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Repent of your sins and be baptized. And let him nourish your hearts. Let him nourish your souls and your minds. And let him do this so you can have eternal life with God the Father and with His Son. So that is the message. Let Jesus nourish your bodies or your hearts and minds, your souls, and live your life for God and for Jesus and find that eternal life and happiness. Remember, God and Jesus loves you, and as I said before, we love you here at Finding Christ Ministry. Thank you all for watching. Remember that we will be doing some um, short videos, and we will be doing some other things along the way, and um, we will be live again next week. I'll post the day and the time, and hopefully I don't hit any buttons and we don't go sideways or upside down this week. So um, everyone have a great and blessed week, and we will see you soon. Thanks for watching.